and uh, we'll have to see what they choose for another one. That Zyra going out, Lemon Nation being banned out once again. We'll have to see if they can produce anything uh, tricky here to try and get a uh, picker ban in I, their favor. I really don't think Silji U or even or Red Nation are going to ban anything different. Mm -hmm. I think they just have to have a different game plan coming in. Uh, I feel like Red Nation's game plan coming into that last game was solid. Like they're yeah. they did a really good job off the level one. They they had a solid game plan, and for some reason it just didn't work out. Ooh, but they left up a really this time, which is something actually. If they're looking to build a specific strat around Aurelia, it's really easy to bait CLG EU into picking Aurelia. Like they're hundred percent going to pick it every time it's up. It's not even a question. It's of like course Christmas it's for happen. Wicked. Yeah, absolutely. Whenever, whenever Wicked gets Aurelia, he like uh, it's just the greatest day of his life. <laughs> so it looks like they're once again going to ban out Skarner, probably for that not for the Maokai pick, but to just keep it safe, the re-engagement for fights, being able to just throw somebody away from Maokai, or grab somebody away rather. And Yuzuki is the first pick. Well, he just picked top for himself. We're gonna go ambiguous. They had Shen last time. Shen is still open this time. And they're gonna take Maokai though. <sighs> Snoopy, what are you gonna play? Probably get some Cho'Gath in here from Snoopy now, but that is gonna be a Maokai pickup that they're hovering over and locked in on. Oh, very, uh, I, I don't know. I can't really consider that's a really strong pick or not. It's just a very solid pick. Like, right. Uh, Maokai, definitely one of the best junglers in the game. And to no one's surprise, Wicked picks Aurelia. Absolutely no one's surprise. Yeah. Snoopy looking to pick one up here. Probably get a Cho'Gath in. I don't think it's a smart time to pick Cho'Gath. They, no? they can't pick another a jungler here. I really would like a Sona pick here or a support pick here because they already have a jungle on another team. The other team will not pick Cho'Gath unless they're looking to Cho'Gath top. And that's, that's true. They don't have to force Cho'Gath top out is of this. really bad against Aurelia. We'll have to see what they have. It's all about the Snoopy here. Who he's going to decide to choose for. I like a Corky or a, an, either an AD or support. Corky, Solo, both of those could work. Even Leona would be fine here. Although Leona, not really good until you see the rest of their picks. Oh, actually, they decide to go with the jungle pick. I'm very, very surprised about that. So they do grab the Cho'Gath. All right. Maybe they're looking to save their bottom lane for later to look to counter pick the other team. But really, I didn't think it was necessary. Like, I feel like if they picked up like a Sona or a Corky there, right. it would just be. No, that was a really good. Uh, you know, I thought you were completely correct. I was like, yeah, they have a jungler. That's right. Didn't take that into consideration. They don't really have to force the jungle pick. But now, yeah, they leave open. You know, Ezreal is out, so they leave open the Sona. It, it doesn't get that much har uh, harassy without that Ezreal. <coughs> we can still. You're obviously going to get those power cores in the bottom lane, so it's always a safe pick. Zyra is out. Lulu's also in there, but you don't see too much Lulu play from either. I don't of these think teams. either. Yeah, yeah, either of these teams don't feel comfortable playing Lulu. Right. Really, I kind of ex maybe just expect to see a bottom lane pick here by by Red Nation, or like even a top lane pick. They already know the top and jungle, so you can really easily just pick your top lane here and save the rest of the lanes for later. But they're really taking their time with this pick. Yeah, I was gonna say a lot of thought going into this one. We see that Nunu being picked up, and possibly the Jax for the top lane. So Ooh. we do have that going in. Nunu Jack. Jack's a very strong lane against Aurelia. Aurelia wins that lane early, but it kind of becomes Jax's lane as the lane progresses if Jax doesn't die in 1v1. So really like a kind of skill matchup lane. I'm actually kind of curious how Yuzuki plays that lane out, because I've heard Yuzuki's a really, really good top, top lane Jax. Creates a, a pretty good gank lane for Wicked to go in there for with that Maokai and Jax lane, so that'll work out for them. So that'll allow him to be a little aggressive at least. And I like the Nunu pick because Nunu synergizes well with Jax and denies the dive that Aurelia tries to do. So they end up actually just picking Sona right after their Cho'Gath pick anyways. They are going to be able to grab that Yellow Pete. Uh, most likely going to be picking out Froggen probably just wants to sit there until the end right I he can counter with I definitely uh, agree with that Froggen has a large counter pick champion pool and you just see the Corky stone that picked up no <coughs> now you we actually said that Froggen is playing Corky could that could they just throw that in there as a, a wrench at Reddit Nation right now uh I don't really think no he's gonna do that no he wants to play a lot more fun champions so I really don't <laughs> see Froggen picking Corky this game uh, but you see the cog picked again yeah. Uh, that's going to be a really, really hard lane to deal with. Sona actually doing extremely well against Nunu. Because Nunu really can't, can't sustain himself while Sona can just continually yeah, poke him over and, over and over again. So we pick up the Orianna for a little bit of Protect the Cog here. And he's going to get a, a little bit of a buff from Nunu. The Blood Boil is going to make them a little bit more troublesome in the fight. So that'll be good for Reddit Nation. I think they have a better fight composition this time as well. 
uh, coming into this. They really relied on a lot of uh, ultimates that have long cooldowns and could be down if easily missed. Unstoppable Forest and Crescendo weren't really seen too much to uh, to aid in those fights for Reddit Nation last game. So they have a, a, a way better team comp with just dueling it out and getting in there and punching think, CLG you in the face if they can. Yeah, I definitely think toward the late game, uh, there's it's no question Reddit Nation has the better late yeah. game scaling team. But we still have to see how it plays out in lane because I feel like at, in at least two lanes, the early game is going to be dominated by CLG EU. Right. And what will he decide to pick against Orianna? Maybe an Ari pick here. He's very, very well known for his Ari play in the last tournament. Now, you, before you said he doesn't play Eve or just doesn't like to play Eve. Can play. Uh, he typically doesn't right. like to play Eve. Right. But oh, he decides to lock in the Gra Gragas. He actually played this yesterday. We just saw him downstairs playing. Yeah, actually. in one of the warm -up, in one of the <laughs> matches, he decided to play Gragas. He did extremely well because they screamed Orb. Or Red Nation just yesterday. And I, was, was, I was very surprised to see his Gragas play. It's very <coughs> meticulous. You know, he, he doesn't just, you know, fast cast or smart cast everything. He, he sits there and he cues and he'll lay out the barrel and then he'll throw the barrel. And I was like, never really seen anybody do that. Usually it's just a mouse flick, shift Q or Q if you smart cast and be done with it. He tries to guide guide the opponents in, yeah. into walking into his barrel. He uses his barrel more as like a a positioning zoning tool than other Gragas's that I've seen. It's very, right. very smart. Not just going for straight damage. Yeah, it's either you take the auto attack from Gragas yeah. with the 30 AD steer weight off his W, <laughs> or you run into his barrel, and he has his ulti to be able to control a lot of your positioning. He's he's a very, very strong Gragas player. I, I'm i actually surprised he did this matchup, though, because Ori versus Gragas. Ori definitely wins the early game in terms of auto attack, caress, auto attack trades, but right. once he gets toward the later game, it starts becoming an issue. Is that is that a, is that just a spam level W lane for Greg, I guess? Uh, against Ori? It's really just like yeah, you you can you can look to maybe look to get a kill if you can land the body slam and able to get off the autos. Uh, a lot of people underestimate Gragas' early damage. So yeah, Gragas has silly. one of the best early game steroids in the game. He's got a 30 80 steroid, with 10% damage reduction off his W. And so all you really need to do is pop that and then E and his auto attack him down. And there's no way he can trade against you because his Q lowers your attack speed. So the trade value is going to be Yeah, not a lot of people know that. Yeah, horribly sided <laughs> uh, toward Gragas' favor. This is one of those random debuffs. All right, so we have all the lock-ins finalized and done. Really? Looks like it may just be a blood boil escape lane. It's kind of scary. You you might actually see another one v two this game, yeah. but I think they'll just look to start bottom because this this time they can get the double golems on blue side, and with the double golem advantage, you're able to beat counter lane matchups yeah. or at least split even against counter lane matchups. But I, and also Jax isn't like the greatest one v two. Wicked, Wicked might actually look to force the 1v2 this time, though, because typically Wicked only ever picks up heal if he's looking to 1v2. You like almost it. never see Wicked 1v2, but, but yeah, he, when he 1v1s, he always takes a knight. Yeah, so, he, he, he's always good in the 2v1 matchup. He, even if he has a bad lane 1v1, he can always bounce back. You'll see him at 30 minutes in the game with you know a few items. Right. So is you not a team known to force the 1v2, though. They're very comfortable to just laying them, laying the other team do it right. for them, and just outplaying them in terms of the early game. Let's see what they can produce. What do you what do you feel for level one invasions here? If there will be any, I know Reddit Nation was want to going to want to play this one carefully, or maybe you know pull something out. I think the level ones are pretty similar. Like there's not really anyone with a dominant level one. The Cho'Gath rupture and the the Jax stun typically cancel each other out. Yeah. They'll probably just look to, both teams will look to play safe. They'll just get one more out on the map and just look to play it safe from there. And we'll look for Connor Logic to pretty much go in, ward up so they can get a little bit of vision on the jungle, allow Froggen to really get wraiths whenever you need to after that first, you know, five or so minutes. And uh, we'll have to see what they can produce. We're jumping into our second game here. If you're just joining us here at the Lone Star Clash 2, <laughs> moving to the third, along with me is Skara. Skara, how you doing right now? <coughs> no. no. Oh, okay, Skara's dying. We'll get back to him in just a few minutes. Oh, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> For some reason, I have a really dry throat. Let me drink some water real quick. <laughs> we're in Texas. I'm very dry in Texas. Yeah. We're hot. And we're going to have a pretty good matchup between these two teams. Froggen, as I said before, just a few minutes ago, playing a, a quick solo queue matchup. And there you can see the gentleman in the stadium hanging out, getting ready to play. Crepo on the end there as they go down. Yellow Peak, Froggen, Snoopy. And on the end is Wicked. Oh, that didn't work. 
So we'll have to see what they do for this level one matchup. We kind of said, you know, they have the same level one counters with uh, that crowd control coming from Jax as well as Snoopy. So they look to just stand off on the sides here. The first thing you should immediately note in this game is that Nunu decided to buy a pink ward. And that's typically not, not standard because Nunu starting the lane with no sustain against Sonopoke is horrendously bad. Uh, it means you get pushed out by like two, three levels easily. But in this situation, they they might look to. I don't look. I don't think they're looking to force a one v two. They may just look to get the, that that early pink one up is going to be really really uh, strange. I have to wait and see to, what what angle they're going to look to put that pink ward. They already wore a top lane, so that top will be really really hard to gank, and Jackson go just hard without having to worry about jungle pressure. But where this Nunu is going to be going around is just it's where to keep your eyes on for early level one. So, yeah, that ward is going to help. Snoopy may be grabbing that red heading up top. And they're just really putting the focus down towards the top side of this. Oh, this is curious. Okay, you see Yellow P and Crepo both top lane, like in the top bush, and it's getting toward 140. I don't know if they can transition bottom lane fast enough. It does look like Wicked is going to go back to the fourth pot and start bottom and force the 1v2. They did just get vision on that, so they know that Crepo and Yellow Pete are still up top. And they're going to say, hey, they have not rotated down towards that bottom, and it does know. Jax, which way? Yuzuki can't decide yet. He's actually looked like he was going down, but then they decided not to. They're going to grab up uh, Golems and decide to stay down bottom. And it looks like the Invade coming in here. Actually, it looks like Counter Logic going in. They did not get the offensive ward either. I was completely wrong about that, and they still try to be aggressive here. Looks like they may try to push something on. That blue buff is going to be grabbed up, so they're throwing off high near. It's going to be very aggressive in the lanes if they want to for this first part of the map. Very TSMS just grabbing that out. And we're going to see this uh, Snoopy just be able to do what he wants as his lanes continue to push. So, so they knew that more than likely, the, or they knew that they would want force the 1v2, so they made the best of it by forcing an invade and taking the blue buff. Mm -hmm. I really think what Hodge should have done is he should have started red because they, they had the 1v2 themselves and could have copied what CLG did last time, having the AD carry pull red and, and the support helping. So we do see the lane swamp coming in fully here. Crepo went top with yellow P, as you said, and we do have Wicked down bottom taking that heal to keep himself nice and tanky in lane in any of the scary situations. So Snoopy's going to have a lot more presence coming into these lanes as soon as they want. It looks like everybody's being quite aggressive, though. Wicked's going to be looking for Snoopy down bottom in just a little bit. But for right now, really nothing is going to happen. When, you, when you're able to do that against the Maokai and just pretty much destroy his jungle with blue, when, when do you even expect to see him? Can you really just... I don't expect to see him till, till like, six minutes. Yeah. He, he might do, like, a very surprise gank because that's one of the... Like, a buffless gank might work because he brings a lot of CC by himself, but typically it's a waste of time. Like, he needs to get back into the game. The game, unless it's a really, really obvious gank and that he can get it off almost 100%, he just has to farm out his jungle and hope for the best. Because it takes at least, like, a couple levels, two, two, two levels to get both the CC abilities. And since he started Southland, it's going to take at least to level three before he has a presence on the map. This is going to be really tough for Yuzuki. In this same position down in bottom lane, Wicked can just continuously blade surge those minions. There it is. And he's going to take a little bit less damage. Obviously, Kog'Maw's W is on quite a high cooldown, so it'll be back and forth. But the sustain that Wicked gets, you know, from the passive as well as just being able to blade surge is going to make it way easier than Yuzuki's 2v1 right now. Yeah, definitely. So, so Wild Turtle, we'll go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, like, you're, you're absolutely correct. You see Aurelius CS, he's already 7 CS above Jax, and Jax, Jax's turret also has more tower damage. So that, that could be the lane push as well. Once they take that turret down, they get the switch back up. Oh, wow, and look at health rush. pot difference. Top lane, zero health pots. Going in strong. It looks like they do get the double Counter-Strike on. They're going to be focusing down onto Crepo here. He may go. They're actually going to stay in for the fight to try and get first blood, and it's going to go to high. On Maokai, I like the thought by Crepo there, but I feel like he could have micro himself a little bit more to take less damage from the auto attacks. Hmm. I think if Crepo flashed back immediately, he could have been able to get away. Or, right. at, or at least pressure Jackson to not be able to not follow up. 
Oakley. Oh, wow. Snoopy took in a lot of harass there. But that lets Maokai get back into the game. Yeah. That's so good for them. Because like I said, he really wouldn't have any map pressure until level 3. And high decides is the minute he hits level 3, let's lane gank top. Because top lane had no more health pots left and he would have been in a lot of trouble there. Oh, Froggen getting an early blue. And then you see how much damage Froggen's autos can do there. So just because of getting an early blue, is, would that ever situationally make the way you level different? Uh, it just means that you don't really have to level, you don't really have to worry about getting harassed because right. your sustainability is your passive with, with Gragas and you're able to just spam spells mm -hmm. and keep your, For sure. your health regen extremely high. So 1-0, to zero, just a bit of a 400 gold lead with that invasion as well as the first blood. So it's not going to hurt them too much. I'm surprised that middle lane decides to opt for gold per 10. It seemed like Ori may indeed buy just maybe two or three gold per 10. Oh, Yuzuki. Gold per 10 into the death fire, yeah. Right, Yuzuki's movement there was a really big tell. Like, it's kind of obvious for CLGU because he, he, he moved in a really odd pattern that it, it looks really obvious to them that high nine's probably in that bush. You're probably looking to gank top. Right, yeah, he hasn't been doing this at all the entire time. They go for another lane gank, and since he really hasn't been able to get to his buffs, that's all they can really come up with. Being seen from the river is just going to make him waste time over and over. So they're going to get this lane pushed out like we saw before in that bottom lane so it can be even, but they're not going to be able to do that. They're kind of just going to hurt Yuzuki in this process. Nian just opting to farm it out against Froggen, knowing that he can't really contest a blue buff mid lane champion. Right. It just gives you such strong benefits early game with blue buff that you don't ever want to look to trade against someone with blue buff. A lot of aggression here from High. What are, what are they? Oh, there it is. It's Snoopy coming in for the counter here. High spending a little bit too much time top to get more experience under his belt. And it looks like he may go down the twisted advance to give himself the gap close. And they pick it up. Yellow P grabbing one on the board. Uh, yeah, they just looked to push too far in. Like their ward wasn't right. in the tri bush. So they couldn't know that Snoopy was coming until after they saw him uh, already appear at bottom and, and by far by then they were way too far pushed out they couldn't get out of the gank so it seems like high has kind of put himself in that setback position once again he goes down snoopy's left to roam the jungle now with that assist and he almost has the philo finished as well so maokai getting a philo off of that first blood good damage onto wild turtle and you can just see lemon nation really can't trade back right there the ultimate trying to clear out all the minions and pushing them back. So Wicked still 26 to 13 in this lane. And that last push also did not help Yuzuki. High and Yuzuki just crushing down with AoE spells on the minions and not farming them. That lane is kind of going to waste. And they we're going to have to focus on their AD. Oh, very interesting play by Red and Nation here. They decide to come down bottom. They see Top is looking to freeze. They just immediately look to force a Baron off this. Very... Uh, questionable play, but I would say very smart in this situation. Because Yellow P and Krempel definitely have a tendency to freeze the 1v2s a lot more than the other, than, than the, uh, uh, the uh, what you call it, Red Nation's 1v2. Yep. And here we go, they could be going down bottom here for Wicked. Not No wards there, actually, so he's not going to change in movement. They'll see this as he just stays there. Going for the jump, the Counter-Strike, but he leaves too far away. Only a little bit of poke will be had there for Wicked. And leaves him happily farming at his turret. But actually, they're all going to stay here, and he may be forced to back. He does not have vision that Nunu is behind him. And we can see Wicked playing in a very defensive position, just keeping himself safe. Very logical to play there. Ooh, they're trading top and bottom towers, but top lane, they lose about three waves. Uh, and I don't know if they can force Aurelia off the XP, and it looks like they can't. This is going to be big. Actually, Wicked getting down. He could be taken down here. It's a 2v1 under the turret. Wild Turtle did not follow fast enough. Looks like they will be able to finish with that artillery shot from Wild Turtle. And will be able to take out this turret. Snoopy could have found oh. himself in a bad position here. But here comes Frog, and they're going to turn this one around in their favor. There's no way that Reddit Nation can pull this one out. Actually, no, they do. Wow, Yuzuki actually just turning... It's like they wanted the fight, but they didn't. They wanted it at first, and then everybody was like, high is kind of low, Wild Turtle has no mana, neither does Yuzuki. That's why I thought they were not going to be able to pull that fight out. And this kind was of, a really, it was a really bad idea yeah. for Ian to go bottom. He should have looked to put pressure middle. There was no way he was going to outroam a Gragas bottom. So he had to put pressure middle, just tell his team to go back, or rotate back top. Look at how much XP top missed. Top, top tower going down by the... Before the 10 minute mark, I don't think Red and Nation played that correctly. They, they got the tower bottom, they got the kills, and they should have immediately sent someone top, whether it be mid or just someone had, had to go bot, uh, back bottom. And they lost blue buff and two towers for that kind of play. Oh, never mind, they didn't lose blue buff. This might make up for the fact that they, 
they, oh. they uh, lost the tower here. Super getting caught out there. High may lose the blue buff though. It goes to Froggen. So it just gets traded around there. And it looks like Yellow Pete's going to make it out safely as well. So the little things are going in favor of Counter Logic. As you were saying, you know, they were doing so well. That was, you know, or not so well, rather, little things uh, being that bottom turret, as well as top turret, two of them. But just coming in, always getting that blue buff, getting that steal. The fact that it went to Nintendo or it went to, you know, Reddit Nation was hugely going to help in that for them to get back in just the small laning phase that they have left at bottom and mid. But for that to continuously go in favor of CLG EU, it's what happened last time. They're going to get that fearless roaming position going on where just, you know, we're going to see Froggen going 1v1ing, Wicked going 1v1ing. It's going to become a really big solo queue match for these guys. And Reddit Nation really needs to pull this together as a team and start grouping. Right, so you see both the top laners or decide to freeze their lanes. So both the side lanes, you really can't do anything. Mm -hmm. So I feel like both teams are just going to go group up middle now and look to slightly poke each other, harass each other. There's really not much else on the map to do. Uh, I don't exactly have a dragon timer, so I don't know how quickly it's going to come up. Oh, it comes up in three minutes, my bad. But, uh, so that's a long way away. Yeah, just look to four man, three man top. Maybe farm the jungle as well, and then, or four man, three man mid, sorry about that. And look to farm the jungle and wait till the lane shut out. It was a very low CS game for all lanes. It's just been a lot of fighting and a lot of trying to counteract what's happening. And that's going to really benefit towards CLG in the late game. We're going to have to see how that happens. Just Wicked at 60 CS to 37. It's 11 minutes into the game. 100 CS has flown through your lane right now. So these guys are even half behind the amount that has spawned. And we'll see that, that all of that right now, except for, you know, uh, Ninten Nintenso doing very good on Ari and mid. It's it's them, him and Froggen just have this highest CS. The items are all going to be coming in their favor. The GP10s being finished. There's only one or two right now actually on the side of Red Nation with the three coming out for CLG, so the little advantage is continuously growing. Wild Turtle pushing back yeah, this top. top. Top lane definitely has, has to back. The threat of Snoopy yeah. coming top is too large for them to stay there. Uh, Froggen signing for a very interesting build, going for the Abyssal build rather than the DFG rush you see a lot of people do, especially on this patch. Middle middle lane not really too exciting. Both the players are deciding, okay, well, we're just going to farm out this way. <laughs> Mana regen, farm, go. Walking through Ward Frog and putting himself in a bit of a dangerous position. But, like I said before, these guys have the upper hand. They're doing the fearless roam now. 3 to 2, 12 minutes in. Pretty much even on all gold as the fights have been kind of back and forth. The turret control going to counter logic with that last push that Orbit had down bottom. It really didn't get him too far other than a wicked kill. But they lost two turrets from it and a lot of control towards the, the barren point of the game as well. But... The, the funny thing is, even though I, I feel like CLGU has played a lot of this game correctly, that one bad play down bottom caused them to lose control of the mid game, I would feel like. And oh, maybe, maybe Snoopy can look to turn it around, put some more pressure on this lane. Here we go, Snoopy coming in. This looks like Sona gets slowed out and they really considered what that would have had in the fight. There's a 1v1 coming in. He hits off the shield and then body slams. Beautiful play coming from Froggen as he just Ooh. correlates that kill. Froggen just looked to bait out the flash. You really can't look the flash there until you see the Gragas flash. And yeah. even then it's risky. Crescendo coming out. They go right down onto Yellow Pete to shut down the AD carry. Snoopy's in the middle to take all the damage as Yellow Pete finally turns and starts to retort back here. Crepo going down in the fight high, keeping himself in a very dangerous position. Dodges that last uh, missile and they are able to take him out. High oh, can stay alive here. Wild Turtle very low and they get those kills. Froggen for the cleanup, but he comes in with no mana. He could put himself in a very bad position here. We do see Wild Turtle going down to minions and that puts a lot of damage onto Froggen. I don't think they have enough to get under the turret though and he goes all oh, he flashes in he did a body slam flash attack and the damage actually came on the end and he comes up oh it's a draw God. kill for both of them as they go under the turret and wicked is just bottom lane with suzuki going what is going on i really didn't expect that flash play so what you can do with with uh grog's body slam is when it's in motion, you can flash yeah. and put all the damage in one point by flashing on top of the target. So that way you don't have to really worry about uh, controlling what direction it goes or whether or not it hits extra creeps because it does more damage if it hits a single target. So all Froggy did was cast out the E in a random direction and then immediately E on, or immediately flash win animation and get the full body slam damage onto high. High definitely didn't expect that and just lo lost what should have been a one for two at worst. 
Oh, Yuzuki getting a little bit of pressure here. Yeah, it was great. Not definitely in the favor of Frogging. Comes into lane with no mana. Picks up two kills. Oh, Huge damage for the damage. Empower Strike onto Snoopy. And it looks to go down very fast here. The 3v3 Yuzuki very low as well. And Wicked will fall in this matchup. They are moving back here. High going very strong into this fight. Follows the AD carry but backs off. They are forced out of that one, and it is going to be Yuzuki very low, but they take out Snoopy and Wicked, and uh, for Yuzuki being so far behind, I have no idea how he just output that. Yeah, the real big thing to keep in mind here is that Wild Turtle has a 14-minute IE. IE and <laughs> Zerker Boots. He is so far ahead of this competition here. He just, he's, if you look at his build, typically AD players get Dorans because you get the extra health, and Lashley had That's this small sustain. a lot sustain, of rushing lately. But he decided to just be like, no, I'm not going down. I'm going full man mode. Goes to BF Sword, into the pickaxe, into the straight IE, into Zerker Boots. So he's extremely squishy, but he does so much damage with the uh, Blood Boil. He's by far the strongest threat in this game. Oh, on to Froggen here. Froggen is able to do the exploding cast, but it's not going to be enough. Yuzuki putting on all the pressure. He flashes the body slam, could save him, but he can't get it off. The last in Power Strike coming off, but they could find themselves going down as well. Good damage from the ultimate of Aurelia. Snoopy very low. Snoopy taking so much damage in this matchup in every trade. He goes down again. Two more kills on top. That's about four kills in the last five minutes for Reddit Nation. They've changed this around 100% from last game. Oh, yeah, it's looking extremely good for them now. You see, Snoopy is so far behind, he's not really tanky. You saw him go in there and just saw him ex explode in like three or four seconds. And he even went for the chain vest as well. He has the heart of gold for a little bit of sustain on the HP, but there, even, the, even the Ninja Tabi to defend on that. But he just got crushed down in mid, and Snoopy's really, it looks to be the one who's going to be building full tank. You know, Wicked's going to go tanky bruiser, but you're going to need Snoopy to be in the middle of that fight. Oh, absolutely. I think the, the main problem was that Snoopy like, died in the last team fight. And he wasn't right. able to get his fee stacks back up before he came middle, and just that way his he has no defensive stats. He just got blown up immediately because he didn't have any high health, the high health barrier that that uh, Cho'Gaths typically have. Well, hopefully in six minutes from now we find a bigger Cho'Gath coming into lane at full stacks. So we'll have right. to see what he can do. Yuzuki giving off the red to Wild Turtle. Just such a good game for Turtle right now. He's able to control so much, and they're really taking Protect the Kogma to the next level. Like you said, no Dorans, no real health. He did go for the uh, the Negatron Cloak to try to mitigate some of that damage as well. Possibly go double on the uh, Cleanse Quicksilver Sash. Right, so Cog realizes the only threat on the right. other team is Froggen. And that that's what I feel like a lot of games come down to how Froggen, how well Froggen plays. Like, th their team would be, CLG you would be completely out of this game, but Froggen was able to pick up a triple kill top lane and get himself in the position to where he could potentially win team fights if he depositions them with ulti just because he has a, a lot of items in, in relative to the rest of his teammates. So right now, CLGU still in the game due to frog and farming really well and picking up the kills. And so Kog'Maw builds this Negatron. Yeah. Most likely will build either a Banshees or a QSS fairly quickly. Probably going to delay that until after his PD, but he's definitely going to pick it up because he knows Froggen is the only threat. Let's see, Froggen in mid now, just, oh, goes for it, hits him, but not full damage, they may have to back off of the, no, hits the full barrel, the Ignite will tick down, if he does not have shield, he's going down, but it looks oh like he's able to God. save himself with about 8 HP, a huge play there, Froggen, if he hit the full damage on the ulti, that would have been a dead Orianna as well, we saw Yellow P outputting some good damage with that Sheen proc, and now pushed back once again in the fight. That is something Counter Logic needed very much so. That would have really helped them to push down that mid turret. And it would have given them a little bit better positioning here as they're really losing both lanes on the outside. And Wicked has not been able to come in for these fights yet. So they're moving out. Looks like they're just going to soak up the jungle here. So with this in Reddit Nation's favor, how quick do they have to be in the face of Counter Logic again? Uh, hmm. I don't know, this is a strange game for me. I obviously CLG is gonna look to play for a like a late uh, game here yeah. because they can't look to to force fights. But they have to because their late game is in no way comparable to Reddit Nation. So right now, uh, is probably the ideal moment to look to make a play. If as long as they can split Kogma away mm -hmm. from the team, they can look to force a 4v4, 4v5 without Kogma and potentially win with Froggen. But as soon as it comes to a full 5v5 fight, if they don't kill Kogma within the first four seconds, five seconds yeah. of the fight, then they, they'll probably more than likely lose. Well, that's going to be hard, too, because you're going to look to waste spells on a cleanse and Quicksilver Sash Kogma. Right, and it's really hard to get through Nunu. Like, Nunu stops dives 
just by existing. Like you snowball when they just ulti and going through new new ulti takes almost the entire team fight. Like it's just the most <laughs> annoying thing. <laughs> Yeah, they have a great peel team, especially that Maokai, Arcane Smash, Nunu Ulti, like you said, the Ice Blast, just so much slow to help out Kog'Maw on top of the Ori Ball, and him giving himself Quicksilver Sash and Cleanse, not the QSS yet, but these fights are really going to be in their favor, a very tricky and elusive Reddit Nation team here as they come in for 5v5s. We'll have to see how that plays out. Wicked getting very aggressive, goes for the 10 on to high, and they will start to initiate a little bit. It's going to be on to Jax. There's the slipperiness of the team just oh. jumping away, totally blowing out that crescendo. And, and they it looks like that could be the initiation. Yeah, we do see them going in onto Frog and they miss it. The Command Shockwave does not hit many members. Froggen trying to bounce out, but he goes down. Can't even get his ultimate off. CLG isn't even using their abilities in this fight. They just got crushed down. Still going on to Crepo. One more shot. Can he get the alt down? He goes for the W after flashing. Oh, he's going to get himself in such a bad position. But it looks like he could go in. Trying to go for Wicked. Could go out with a Penta here. Wild Turtle. One more shot. And the Penta kill. Oh, what a beast. Wild Turtle playing a super, uh, super high high damage Kog'Maw there. Very aggressive. Flashing, cleansing into the tower to pick up kills. And they're going to just pick up a free Baron off this. It looks really bad for CLGU. Kog'Maw 11-1-3. I really don't see how CLGU can get back into this game. Super all or nothing Kog'Ma build. I don't want any sustain. I don't want any health. I just want to rip your face apart. And that is exactly what he did to the entire CLGU team. Very hard to come back from. We were saying that Froggen, you know, 4-3 and three was able to pick up a triple kill earlier in the game. But right now, that's all just being negated. Oh, absolutely. Kog'Maw tore him. Great, like he just tore through uh, Frog uh, in three hits. I think he crit once yeah. for 450 <laughs> and then he crit another time. And I was like, okay, well, he has to run away. No like, all from Gragas, no all from Snoopy or, or uh, Cho'Gath, rather. They really missed out on a lot of damage that fight because of how off guard they were caught. It, it was just a bad situation to be in. As soon as they missed Crepizol, they, they had to immediately run away, but they couldn't get themselves in a position to, to escape with how fast Nunu and Kog'Maw were coming in from the side. Because the command shockwave combo with Jack Sleep really caught them off guard. It really, Nian really, and Yuzuki really secured that team fight for Red Nation. I always want to call them Orb, God. <laughs> say it. Form just what formerly known as, and you'll be good. I have to say that every time then? No. <laughs> so, I looks like Blood Boil doing its job here. It's gonna be that tower crush now for Reddit Nation. They have full control over this one. It really, oh wow, going in on the Crepo. Just from that range, Wild Turtle could have exploded him. They have so much control, and it really is, Scar, a complete flip side of last match. Right, and you see Wild Turtle being like, okay, well, I'm just gonna build another Negatron. So he picks up a Dancer and a second Negatron, a build you really don't really see on anything but tanks. Yeah I, yeah, I thought he was going to build something out of it, but it looks like he just wants to start a collection. Bottom lane getting pushed out quite hard here with Baron being down. Bottom lane doesn't even need something they need right now. It's just a little bit of gold if they want it. Reddit Nation chooses what they want to do right now. The whole team is Mundoing. Dragon's not even up, so they can just play with this. Right, the optimal play would have been to send someone bottom to push it all the way, but Reddit Nation feels like their advantage is so high. They yeah. can look to force fights, 5v5 in bad positions under the enemy tower and still come out on top. And I can't say they're wrong with that decision. I really think they're that far ahead. Yeah, Snoopy still trying to get himself in that tanky position. Only the Glacial Shroud would really benefit from a, a Giant's Belt. Not that it even has a build to go with what he has right now, but he just needs that HP. These guys are way too squishy for the engagements they're handling from Reddit Nation. Right, like maybe a Cho'Gath can get a Frozen Heart in time. They're able, right. they'll be able to deal with Jax and Kog'Maw. Because Ori decides to go for a lower damage build, not rushing Neg uh, Rabadon Deathcap after the, the Grail. The initiation from Maokai goes down a very low cooldown, so they can bring that back up most likely for the next fight. You can see there's really even no harass going to Yuzuki. Wicked knows that that buff is just going to heal him back up. There's really no point to it. It goes in through Empower there, but he doesn't get the damage off. Oh, Wicked trying to stalemate this top push, but they go in on him from the outside. They could not see over the edge. Wicked gets dropped very quickly. He ultimately pushes in Yuzuki. A huge duelist for the team is now down. The command shock with just missing Snoopy as he makes it out. I don't know why he's staying there, but he wanted to rupture Oriana's ball for some reason. Looks like they're going to be taking out the turret here, and they start to back out of this engagement. I think they have two people that need to heal. 
They can yeah. look to take this tower in that time. Easy. They can grab this tower up and protect Kogma if they need to. That shield for Ori is down. You can just see Krepo trying to poke Ooh. out him. With here they go. With Frog's ulti down, there's no threat for Kogma here. Kogma can literally just run train on the entire enemy team. And they are just pushing them out instantly. Kogma, there's oh. the shield on protect Wild Turtle as they continue to rape down these minions. Try to get this lane in their favor. The ward goes down for a little bit of positioning there for them as they can see what's going on when they're spawning and coming back in. Those little engagements need to be in their favor, especially to lose a team at this point. Froggen going in, uses that body slam to get closer, but it's just not enough. Wicked going in strong. He was just taken down in the same situation, but wants to put himself in this situation now. And they just absolutely turn on them. Way too much damage from Wild Turtle coming out. Still doesn't have any sustain for himself. He could com be completely full health right now, but he just doesn't want it. He wants that sustain, or he wants that uh, defense. Building the Negatrons, as we said, just building whatever he really wants. And the continuing just initiation back and forth. The slice or Maelstrom rather, Ventral Maelstrom goes down. Huge pounce in there by Wild Turtle. He comes in with the ultimate. And they continue. They've been low health for so long and they're just sitting in the base. Right. Like, they're playing excellently wow. right now. Even without Baron Buff, they're able to keep themselves up. They're just so far ahead. CLG can do nothing. And there's a surrender. 24 wow. to 8. What a convincing statement.